So a lot of time when you have a whole bunch of little scraps left over, you take them, you glue them all up, you make a nice little panel of multicolored wood with multi-species. Sometimes you can do it very small when you have a lot of thin strips or make it a little bit bigger when you have little big pieces. But today's opportunity gives me a chance to make it even bigger. So let's show you what we're gonna start with now. We're gonna make regular one and two inch size pieces for a big 30 inch Lazy Susan charcuterie board. So I've got all my scraps of just individual pieces of lumber and today, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Now, let's build it. Alright, to prep my lumber, I'm going to cut everything to 36 inches. Some boards, I can be able to get two pieces out of that. Because I'm building the 30 inch round, I'm going to cut everything off. That gives me a couple inches on each side to worry about joining, planing, and getting it all square. So that's our first thing, everything to 36 inches. So I begin the process of cutting all my longer pieces down to size. I've pre-marked them. So just a quick little uh, zip on the table saw and we can get them to somewhere between 34 and 36 now inches. I need to have a measurement that will go from there to the edge of this board. That would be 33 wide. And what we're gonna do is take some of these thicker boards and we'll cut one inch strips and we'll be able to get several of those to be able to put them here to plane down down to about three quarters final thickness. So now I'm cutting the thicker or wider pieces into approximately one inch thick strips so I can get multiple uses out of each of the boards. All right so here's the first half glue up. I got that glued up. I have that to do next so I'm going to do it in three stages not to exceed 15 inches so it'll fit through the planer. All right, I'm getting ready to put this through the planer. I have this piece already through the planer. It looks nice. Here's my little extra piece right there. So let's crank this one out and get it going. Okay, so we have our 30 inches. We have this one board here that's cracked, but we were gonna cut that off because that's my snipe board that's extended out at the end just like that one to move this snipe from to the out to the end. So I'm gonna cut that part off, but this board here has gaps underneath it. So I'm gonna joint that edge to get it to go smooth. Now this glue up looks to be relatively simple. Remember, I've got three pieces I'm gluing up, but the key to this is right there at the joint where each of the three pieces comes together is to make sure you have those clamped together so they can be flushed. If they don't, they're uneven, then you got a lot of work to do to get them all flush. This is my crosshairs of which I am going to be to have the center of the circle. So I'm going to draw a line here because I'm going to mount a little block here to hold So here I'm mounting my little bracket there where I'm going to drill into and just the blue tape and CA glue process to get it to stick and mount it and be ready to go. Okay, to set our radius, we're going to measure from the edge of the drill bit, not the center, from the edge to the center of our point here, and we want that to be 15 inches. So our radius is 15, that makes our diameter 30. That'll give us a cut around the circle. So I put my router on my circle cutting jig and do a trial spin around the block to see if it has a right cut. And then I get ready to plug it in and crank it up. Here we go, route away. Boy, does this thing makes lots of chips, but it's a lot of fun. So I'm only cutting about a quarter inch each time and I bought a special spiral up cut bit for this process. I'll leave a link for you below so you can see this bit. It cut fabulous on three different cuts. All right, so we have the first cut, oh, three eighths and a half inch thick. And it was a nice cut. And we even got back to our original spot 
And you know what? It's round. That's really helpful. Watch that it did not cut all the way through. I'm gonna do that with a handsaw. There's one there and there's one there. Now we'll get those cut. Okay, so here's the charcuterie board, all glued up. First sanding, we wanted to have a lip on this. And so my original idea was to take the off cuts and glue them on the edges and then cut the outside perimeter again with the router bit. But there's too many of these pieces that we'd have to piece together and the angles would be challenging. And I figured with some of the small pieces only being a half inch wide, router bit might knock them off. Hey, so that didn't sound too good. So plan B is where we're going now. I'm gonna take three strips of wood that I cut, three different species, and we're gonna do an edge banding. We're gonna wrap it around here like this. So you can see that that's pretty tight like that. So basically what I need to do, rather than force this, I'm going to soak it and pre-bend it. So we're going to put it in water for a couple hours, get it nice and soft, and then I'm going to put it on a frame and pre-bend it so it'll already have an arc to it. So when I'm ready to glue it on, it won't have to stretch quite so far. So I put my strips in water for oh three to four hours to get them nice and wet and flexible. Then I got my jig out that I had made just for this purpose of putting a nice curve in these pieces. And with a couple of dowels on there, I clamped them all up together to hold them for a while. So I took off all the clamps I had. Some of them were just pinching the pieces together. Then I had this band clamp and it was in key to holding these pieces on so I just released the tension on that and you can see these things kind of release and come back out so and just have a little bit shape. of an arc. The key is really uh, have they retained enough of the shape so we can clamp one in successfully without too much issue. So I have one layer of trim bolted on or clamped on. I've got some gaps in here I had to clamp this to get this to, cl to close, and you can see it's not very good. And we got some spaces all the way around that we'd have to clamp up a bunch. So my determination is that the strips that I have cut are probably a bit too thick for what I'm trying to do. These prevent them, and then we had them clamped. Here's the issue. These are 3.6 milliliters wide. That's 0.15 inch. I'm gonna replace it with some pieces that are 0 0.08 inches or 2.23 milliliters. Here we have clamped up the 2.3 milliliters, three times, three layers for our edge banding. And it looks a lot better. We'll be able to clamp that tight, but the spacing between each of the layers, nice and smooth and tight. So it bends a lot easier. It makes for a better banding. Although it's not three different varieties of wood, It'll be a lot easier to get glued up and then we can come back and trim it. This is always a challenge. You want to try a glue up and you're not sure if you can do it all yourself, but by golly, let's give it the old college try and crank it out. Sure enough, I was able to get it within the clamps with glue on it and get it clamped down. After all three layers of the banding were dry, I started with the bottom and then I went to the top and just took my hand plane and made all the layers even on the top. Then I finished it with two layers of shellac. So to mount the Lazy Susan turntable on the bottom, I pre-drilled some pilot holes about a half inch down. That's my mark on my drill to make sure I don't over drill and go through the bottom. There's four holes for the mounting of the Lazy Susan, turn it over. 
So I put my Lazy Susan centered over my holes and get my screws, screw them into the board. Now we got one turntable installed. This is what it looks like. This is how it turns, nice and smooth. That makes for our completed build. So if you liked our Lazy Susan charcuterie board, give us a thumbs up. Want to see more of our builds? Consider subscribing down below. And as usual, come back and see us real soon. Thank you.